right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Jason Forrest, who is in Fort Worth, Texas. How are you doing, Jason? Good. Good, good to see you. Good to see you, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're going to talk about today is the mindset of a sales warrior, which is uh, which is a book that uh, Jason authored. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, to talking about that. So first of all, um, James, what was the background to the book? Why, where did this come from? Uh, sure. Yeah. So so the, the, the book, um, you know, started from a, a belief system that I had a long, long time ago. And that is that, you know, we can teach people uh, things to be successful all day long, you know, so I, I I have a formula called performance equals knowledge minus leashes. So performance is what a person does. Knowledge is what they've been taught to do. So knowledge would be like the brand knowledge, the product knowledge, uh, selling the deal, selling skills. So we can teach them these things, but they they don't they don't execute them. You know, so it should be performance equals knowledge. But so like, you know, in your case, pipeline or CRM, right? So you could give them the knowledge of here's exactly how to use your CRM on a daily basis. But then you then you you know check back in a week later and, and they're not doing it. OK, well, what's stopping them from doing it? Well, those are the leashes. And I, I have four types of leashes, self-image, stories, reluctances and rules. And so self-image would be something like, well, I just don't see myself as is you know, very tech savvy. So it's more of a mm -hmm. self image confidence identity thing. So they're not using the CRM because they don't see themselves as very techie, you know, or a story they go, well, you know, I mean, I use it sometimes. It's just, it depends on if I feel like I've got a hot prospect, then I'll, you know, I'll put them in the CRM. If I don't, then I won't use it, you know, in that case. Okay. That's a story. Uh, the third might be a reluctance. You know, they, they, uh, they have some sort of fear, you know, of using it or a rule, um, that kind of holds them back. So these are, these are these, these leashes, and so, you know, I, I, I've just been obsessed with not just teaching people the practical and tactical skills on how to be a successful sales warrior, but more importantly, what holds them back from executing what they've been learned and been taught. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, that's one of the key things that's often overlooked, I think, is uh, that the foundational piece there is exactly what you're saying about what is holding you back from being successful. Because as you say, I mean, you can train people that the cows come home. You can give them all the tools in the world. But if they have these internal things that are holding them back, nothing, it doesn't matter what you give them, they're always going to bump up against it. That's, a, that's, a, that's exactly right. So, um, so a great question you know, to, to, for, for everyone to listen, listen right now to, to ask themselves is, you know, what stops me from doing blank? So for example, let's say I was to teach a sales team, you know, Hey, every customer we need to ask them, what holds you back from purchasing our product or service? What holds you back mm -hmm. from moving forward with us today? Okay. Well, that's the knowledge. It's a very simple question. Gives you a lot of information, um, that you can address. And then you say, okay, well, the next 10 customers want you to ask that question. Um, and then you report back what happened. Well, the ones they didn't do it, what stopped you from asking that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that, and that's where these leashes come up and that, and that's what we need to really remove and address because it's not about the tactics, it's about executing the tactics and strategies. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, that your first one is self-image because I do think that's a, it's a critical piece and. And we do know in reality, a lot of people, a lot of salespeople default into the, into the career. It's uh, it's the first thing that a lot of people do out of college, regardless of whether, you know, lots of people do marketing degrees, but their first job ends up as sales because there's obviously a lot more sales jobs out there. And I think it's almost, they spend a lot of their lives kind of almost apologizing for, for the profession that they're in. And I think that really impact, you know, that self image impacts and the image of the role even impacts uh, how they approach people. A hundred percent. So I mean, most people, if you were to, if you were to, uh, ask them, you know, um, you know, why did you get into sales? You know, most people, it's, it's a plan B career, not a plan A, you know, they didn't, they didn't go to, you know, I mean, like Texas Christian university, the school that I went to, I mean, it's 60, I mean, now, nowadays, it's not when I went there, but nowadays it's $65,000 a year. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're spending, you know, a, qu a quarter of a million dollars plus, right. To go to university and, and, you know, people usually don't do that to go into a profession of sales. Now, what the, the irony of the whole thing 
is that is that the, the sales profession actually has you the greatest chance of paying off those student loans <laughs> than yeah. anything else you're gonna get from TCU or any other university. I mean, you know, you spend you spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and then you go to get a you know, go get a job making fifty thousand dollars a year. It's gonna take you a long time to pay off that that get a return on that investment versus a sales job that you can, you know, make one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year. It's very different, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I'm glad you brought that up because that is the irony of it is the fact that if you actually go and, you know, maybe you do marketing, maybe you get your first marketing job and yeah, maybe it only pays you 30, 40 grand a year, but the, the sales job that you, that the other marketing person defaults into could possibly give them a heck of a lot more if, if they embrace it. Um, so in your book, you talk about the six human needs. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Sure. So these, these are, um, the six human needs psychology is just like kind of a, an elevated, evolved version of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But but all of these needs are what uh, really drives us. So they have the need of certainty, safety, security, the need of variety, which is kind of freedom and fun, the need of significance to feel important, the need of love and connection to feel like I'm a part of something bigger than myself, uh, the need of uh, growth to feel like I'm getting better, and the need of contribution to make a difference in the world. And this actually was a uh, originally uh, was what came from Tony Robbins, uh, and one of my one of my um, certifications is in addiction counseling. And what we find is when three or more of these needs are being met, you become addicted to something. So when three or more of these needs are met, you become addicted to something. And so where I applied it in the book is that um, the reason why a customer is um, you know, thinking about making a change is because their current product or service is not meeting the six human needs or some of the six human needs. So maybe it's not giving them the same certainty that it did before. Maybe it's not giving them the same variety of freedom. Maybe it's not giving them the same significance or love and connection or growth or contribution. And so what you need to find out whenever you're prospecting is, you know, why did they originally buy that product or service and how has their situation evolved where their product or service is not meeting those needs. And that's where you'll find the gap. And then, so let's say, you know, that it's not meeting the need of certainty and significance and contribution. Well, then you just need to show them how your product or service will meet those new, those needs. And that creates that attraction. Um, and then you're off to the races. Yeah, no, that's a, that, that's fascinating because I think that that's such a, that's such a great framework to approach it with. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, that's something that a lot of people could could do with using because I think sometimes there's a haphazard, it's just like, oh, well, I've got the product and I tried to persuade you, oh, well, is it, how's your one doing today? But I'm not really digging, as you said, into understanding, you know, the different type of needs that it may, that it may not be meeting. Um, you also have something here that just, that just jumped out at me was, uh, reinventing your authenticity uh it sounds almost like a it sounds almost like a contradiction in terms but uh so could you explain that one well the reason i, I came up with it is because i felt like people were misusing the word authentic they were mm -hmm. it was almost like a you know a white flag you know of of when someone says you know i, I feel like what happened is is in our training people would say i don't feel like using this training because it's not authentic to me well, it's kind of a cop out, really. And, and so if you actually look at the original Latin and Greek meaning of the word authentic, um, it actually comes from from the ever changing self or the masterful self. And so, you know, my philosophy is your, your authentic self is your ever growing masterful self. So it's this constant evolution, you know, of really of really who you are. So. So by by learning something new and by you know figuring out what that looks like, you, you, that that's what being authentic is. Authentic is not how you were born on day one. Like that's ridiculous, right? Like when someone says, you know, I I really want to go, I really want to, I really want. This doesn't feel authentic to me. Okay, well, are you saying that you you're ref refusing to ever grow and change and be better? <laughs> yeah, you know, because no, I, I mean. A, a doc, a doctor learning how to be a doctor. It wasn't authentic for them to cut cut a person's brain open when they first started, but it better be authentic by the time they do it. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and what I love about this is, and I, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you highlighted this because what I, I love about this is you know, we often hear people and they will say, 
oh, well, that's just me, or you know what I'm like. And I would say, well, yeah, but if it's not great or if it's pretty crap, like, why wouldn't you change it? Why wouldn't you evolve and change? And that's what I think, that's where people lose the concept of authenticity, as you just said, which it should be a living, breathing, evolving thing. It's not, as you say, it's not just like, oh, well, I'm at this age now and this is how I operate and that's the authentic me. Well, if it's, if it's not... If it's not serving you, well, why would that? Why would you want that to be your authentic self? Correct. Yeah. So, so, what, so to your point, what's interesting is, um, you know, we've all had people that are in a mood, right? They, they're in a bad mood or they're in an angry mood. Well, if a person's in a bad mood or an angry mood for for let's say a few a few days or a few weeks, even or a month, people will say, oh, well, that, that's just their temperament. You know, they, they just have a temperament of being angry if they're if they're stuck in that mood for, let's say, a few months. Well, if that if that temperament stays along for maybe a year or so, someone will start saying that's their personality. And your personality, I love this quote by Joe Dispenza, your personality creates your personal reality. So 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 my point is that same person that said, well, this is just who I am. Well, it, it but you st- it's, it became who you are one day when you decided to adopt that mood and you let that mood stick and that turned into your temperament, which turned into your personality and that personality turned into your personal reality. So, but to your point, if it's not serving you, if it's not helping you achieve your outcomes and making you get kind of money you want or the freedom you want, or, you know, the sex life you want, whatever you want out of life, then just change it, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, cause I always love the thing I put, I'm I'm a I'm a very strange Irish person. I'll just give you I'm, uh, that I I really like punctuality. I can't stand being late, and I can't stand people being late. You know, whatever. And uh, it's one of those things in Ireland. You know, most people are like, oh, you know, if I'm if I'm an hour late, I'm on time. Um, but but that's one thing you often hear from people like, oh well, oh yeah, well, sorry. Oh, you know, I'm always I'm always a little late or whatever. And 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 it's again, it goes back to that thing. And so number one is like, who made you God? And second off, um, well, guess what? You can change that you can change that behavior. And if you change that behavior, it'll change you and it'll change the people you interact with. That's it. That's, 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 yeah. So one of the things I tell my kids all the time is, and I've been saying this since they were four or five is that you are the problem and you are the solution. Yeah. And, and, and which, which is very different than unfortunately majority of Americans, you know, Americans believe that, you know, that they, they, that the, the problem is something outside of them. And the solution is a government handout. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's the, you know, in, in, but, the, but in, in psychology, we call that a, a weak locus of control. So a person who has a strong locus of control believes that, that, um, there's very few things that are not in their control. That's a, that, that would be someone who has a highly efficacious, strong self image, high locus of control. Someone who has a small locus of control says, there's, there's not really that many things that are in my control. And because there's not really a lot of things in my control, then I need to kind of sit around and wait for the stock market to be better. Wait for this coronavirus thing to go away. Wait for the government to figure this thing out. And they're always waiting for someone else. They're waiting for better leads, better marketing, better this, better that, whatever it is. And, and, um, and so, you know, I, I obviously believe the opposite of that because a sales warrior believes they are the problem and they are the solution. Yeah, no, no, a hundred percent. And I love you brought that up as well, because I always call that like outsourcing your outsourcing your, your future to fate, right? If you just sort of go, oh, well, it's nothing I can do about it. It's all these external factors. Well, then, you know, fate's going to do whatever fate's going to do for you. Um, the other thing, um, you know, being a, being a sales warrior, you obviously need to really be, secure in yourself and i like where you say you're be your own support be your own inspiration like be your own love i mean again it's coming back isn't it to taking taking it upon yourself and taking control of these things as opposed to as i say outsourcing them it is so, so like here's a fun thing that we do in training a lot uh, our training just got listed as a listed as the number one sales training program in the united states by global gurus we were very excited about that and where you're selling Thank you. And and one of the things that we put in our training, which is really fun, is is uh, we have people go around and say, "Hi, I'm Jason Forrest. I highly recommend myself because." Ah. And it's so funny, John. Right? How 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 hard it is for people to recommend themselves. 
you know, and, and they always kind of laugh and they joke and we say, look, you know, that that's a, that's a reflection of your self image, because if, if you don't, if you can't recommend yourself and you don't know why you would recommend yourself and you don't know what to say about it and how to say about it, then that's the vibe you're putting off. Yeah, and I, I think I, I love that because I think uh, I think that's such a critical one because you're right. It's when I inter when when I interact with sales when sales people interact with me is I want them to be I want them to have something that recommends them. I want them to be confident. I want them to have something to offer me that I don't have. Not just their product or service, but I also want some insight or some confidence or to learn from them uh, and, and to really like it, it to be an enjoyable experience. But the only the only salespeople who can deliver that are the people, like you said, who have the who have the confidence or are grounded in who they are and what they have to offer. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So that's you know I love this quote from one of, one of the other strategies of the book is is um, how strong is your me? But it was inspired from this um, video that I watched, and everyone can go watch it now. But it's it's the video of of Steve, the late Steve Jobs, uh, doing his his uh, address at Stanford. So just type in Steve Jobs Stanford address and it's his like, you know, his commencement address. And he says this famous line in there. He says, you know, don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your inner voice. Mm -hmm. Don't let the noise of other people's opinions drown out your inner voice. And basically what he's saying is, you know, this guy, this guy, he, he, gave, the, he, gave, he gave this speech about two years before he actually died. He knew he was dying. I mean, he was on his deathbed when he when he um, gave the speech. And so this is a dying guy, a genius, you know, a legend. And he's saying, you know, like, like decide what your soul says, like let your inner voice speak. And what do you believe and what's important to you? And, 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 you know, that provocative voice is what customers want to hear. You know, that, that to me is what a sales warrior is, is, is this is what you stand for and this is what's important to you and this is what matters to you and that is attractive yeah and 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 uh, sort of what you alluded to earlier is unfortunately we live in this culture the pervasive culture today where people are so obsessed with external validation and what other people think and you know, like how many likes or how many people read my all of this all of this nonsense and and they're not working on owning themselves first. That's it. Yeah, and that and that's yeah. So that that's the whole point, right? That's the whole point. So, um, and that again. So one of the things we teach in Warrior Selling is this concept called the veto. And so the veto is a selling message, and it, it stands for veto the customer's current paradigm, you know, of how they see see things. And the formula is vision, example, teach, and own. But the point I always make is that you want to be provocatively respectful. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you want to you want to own the way that you do things and why you do it. So, for example, like the reason why I think we became the number one sales training program and why I'm number five right now on Global Gurus is because um, we took a stand and I tell people all the time that I was sick and tired of all of these sales trainers out there that those who can't do teach and those who can't teach consult and those who can't consult write books. And I was tired of all that. And so I wanted to create a practical real life training program. And I think there's a difference between a theorist and a practitioner. For sure. No, right. I, so I, a theorist will, will tell you what to do, but they won't ever do it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, warrior I, selling is very practical. Yeah, and I and it's a good point, and and as I said it's always it's always been a struggle in the past, and you know having run a sales training company at Healthweight in the past, it's always that struggle is that as soon as people become trainers, they tend to get further and further away from the thing that they're training about, and and that's what's you know, kind of happened across the whole the whole industry. So I love the I love the concept that you have here, and uh, and the other thing that I just I wanted to just touch on here one of the one of the ones you have here is the growth mindset because I, I again I think this underpins everything because if you don't have a growth mindset you're always you're always going to be scrapping around in this idea of scarcity and that oh no Jason got that that means there's nothing left for me you know uh, but the the growth mindset is so incredibly important yeah so yeah so I I end every video with uh, this is Jason Forrest push yourself to become a better version of you so the idea behind it is 
is how can I be just like one day better every day? That's it. You know, like how can I just be one, one day better than I was yesterday? And am I one day better than I was yesterday? Am I, am I, is my, like when it comes to a sales warrior, there's always three things I always teach and that's mindset, process, and language. So is my mindset one day better than yesterday? Is my process one day better than yesterday? Is my, is my language, is the words that I'm saying out of my mouth to communicate our value or the questions that I'm asking our prospects, are they one day better than yesterday? Or is it the same? Is it the same mindset, the same process, the same language? And if that's the case, then you will very quickly get surpassed. By yeah, someone who's I, deciding to be better. Yeah, no, I know. I love that. And I couldn't help noticing that you have a pair of uh, uh, boxing or MMA gloves or something in, a, in behind you there. I, got, I mean, uh, I, got, I got a whole warrior den here. You got boxing yeah. gloves. That's Floyd Waymeather back back there. Oh, wow. Wow. That's all. That's amazing. Look, I'm, I'm big into martial arts. And this is what I always tell people about uh, that it, what I take from martial arts sometimes to reply to to life is that the thing about in, in martial arts is right, there's always going to be somebody bigger, stronger, faster, more flexible, younger, whatever it is, there's always going to be. And your what you need to do every time you go to the dojang or whatever is you need to focus on exactly what you just said. It's not on the person to your left or to your right, uh, is on are you getting better are you working harder than you did last time are you progressing so you have to set your own targets and own your own progress yeah yeah two things that come to mind with that is uh number one is is in in our follow-up program with warrior selling we have these kind of weekly zoom uh sessions we call them dojo sessions oh cool so so the salespeople come to those sessions and the purpose of it is to practice is to you know, get, 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 get all the kinks out and their, their mindset process or language in the dojo so that when they go to battle, it's, they're not getting killed, you know? So that's, that's the purpose. And then the second thing is, um, one of the things I really loved about Bruce Lee is that Bruce Lee was all about studying boxing. He was studying Kung Fu. He studied, you know, jiu -jitsu, all these different things in order to create Jeet Kune Do. And one of the things that he would say is, is, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to study the best and I'm going to take the gym out of it and I'm going to forget the rest. And, and that's really, that was my mindset going into creating, to creating uh, warrior selling is, you know, the best compliment we ever get from, from, from clients, they'll say, Hey, we've gone through, you know, spin selling, solution selling, get them you know, uh, Ziegler, we've gone through, you know, Grant Cardone and, and Jordan Belfort, and we've gone through all this stuff. And somehow you've you've taken you've you've kind of created the highlights of all of their programs and created one system. And that's really what I tried to do. I tried to create kind of the best golden nuggets of everything and then field test it and then put it into into one system. Excellent. So the Bruce Lee of sales training. That's the goal to be the Bruce Lee of sales training. <laughs> no, and, and I love it. And I love the fact that you do those uh, those dojo uh, events, because here's the, one of the other things is um, I do think that says people don't practice enough. It's 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 one of the things that you come across all the time. It's like, you know, I've been doing this so long. I don't need to practice like who doesn't need to practice what they do. Uh, and and the other thing is going going back to the martial arts analogy as well as it doesn't matter how long you're doing it. Sometimes like I go to class tonight and uh, and my master may may say, OK, we're going to do basic techniques and stances, things you've done thousands of times over. But you'll always find that you're maybe not doing them as well as you used to. Maybe you've developed bad habits and all of that. So always coming back and making sure that the fundamentals are taken care of is something that I think that's what the best people do. So the best people do. Yeah, it's co constantly just, you know, analyzing. And, and, you know, for a long time, people always said, hey, the goal of success is to be unconsciously competent. Uh, but that's not true. The, the goal, the goal is really to be consciously competent. You want to yeah. be the Tom Brady, which is, which is to be able to call audibles in the middle of the, of the battle, the middle of the game and to say, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm in the sales process, but I'm now going to pivot and I'm now going to consciously do blank. Like, I mean, <clears throat> one of the biggest, biggest mistakes I see all the time is I'll ask a salesperson, Hey, tell me your sales process. Well, I don't, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really know. I said, what do you mean? Well, I just kind of feel it. How do you how do you create predictable success from that? How do you create predictable success from just feeling it? You know, okay. Well, why did you do? You know, I just watched a video of you. You know, perform and you recorded this presentation. So why did you say that 
in in it in, in that time in that order and why'd you say it before you said this and I don't know that's just what it's just what I do well if you don't know I mean like a, a great chess master knows exactly what they're doing when they're doing it how they're doing it why they're doing it it's, it's all got an outcome and so that's what great sales warriors are is they're they're always thinking from the end that selling is a game of, of chess, not checkers. Yeah. You know, yeah, amateur salespeople think selling is checkers, you know, it's just, Hey, one move at a time. Let's see what happens. It's all luck. You know, <laughs> I think they think it's Jenga most of the time because you know, the pieces or Jenga. Fall. That's even better. <laughs> it's even yeah, better. Be, it, it, exactly. Because as we know, you know, that old saying, you know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So um, if you want to be successful, you want to go on a particular path, you better be actually, focused on the path and know exactly what you're doing yeah hey, hey listen, and the goal Jason, is checkmate this, so, right that's yeah. the goal the yeah. goal is checkmate not checkmate against the customer but checkmate against your competition yep that's the yeah. goal you know and 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 uh and so you got to be thinking through how are you going to do that and how you know if i'm talking to a prospect you know i got to find out very early on you know what do they like and don't like about their current product or service what are they trying to solve? What's the problem they're trying to solve? Who's the competition they're considering? What do they like and don't like about them? And then I have to position, you know, the warrior, the warrior positions their product or service to give them everything that the competition's offering them, uh, but also fill in the blanks of what the competition's not offering them and then convince them, you know, they're going to pay 20% more to get those frustrations removed. Yeah, no, and that's what a sales warrior does. Absolutely. And this, uh, um, listen, Jason, this has been fantastic. The book is called, uh, you know, the, the, the mindset of a sales warrior. I see you also have some more, you even uh, wrote one, uh, how to sell through the coronavirus, uh, proven steps to owning the current moment, which goes back to what we were talking about is like owning the situation as opposed to just letting it happen to you. Uh, all of Jason's information will be below this video, all the links to all of this. But before we go, Jason, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Sure. Company's called FPG, stands for Forest Performance Group, um, fpg.com. And um, um, yeah, so we'd love to, love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Please please connect with me on LinkedIn. And you can check out our programs. We have Warrior Selling, a uh, minimum 90-day program. It's like it's like the P90X CrossFit for sales training, the most intense thing you've ever done. Uh, but it creates tremendous, tremendous sales results. Uh, we have Leadership Sales Coaching, which is a program to teach you how to be the Bill Bilicek, Nick Saban, Pete Carroll of sales management training. And then we also have a recruiting company where uh, we will go out there and find a fearless sales warrior for you. Uh, we will train them for 90 days and then guarantee their success. We've, we've merged a assessment company, a training company, a recruiting company in one because I was sick and tired of how the other recruiters did, did, it, did it incorrect. And so I wanted to have an all-in-one system of recruiting and training in one. Yeah, I, I love that because that is the the number one complaint that I still hear today from any any business leaders or anybody I talk to in my network is finding and recruiting good salespeople is still the toughest. We can thing. do it. So, well, right now the new ad is there's seven hundred thousand open positions uh, on on there's seven thousand seven hundred thousand open sales positions out right now, up from four hundred thousand last year. And and the, what we tell people is that you know d don't even try to recruit in house anymore. Because when you're going against a trained recruiter, who is a, a recruiter is nothing more than a salesperson who's selling the job, right? So you have this mom and pop HR manager who dabbles on a lot of things. And one of their responsibilities is to go recruit salespeople for you occasionally. And it's this part-time gig. And then you've got a full-time, all they do sales recruiter to go convince people to choose you. You're not going to win. It's like, it's like a little league baseball team playing against the majors. They're not going to win. So you, you definitely need to use a recruiting firm. And then we believe, of course, we're the best because of, of how we go about it and what we do that's different. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, all of the information will be below this video. So I would, ex I would encourage you to check it out. And, uh, and yeah, if you're recruiting salespeople, we know how difficult that is. And we know what happens when you get it wrong. So uh, I would encourage you to check it out. Listen, Jason, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.